Mike. I'm very grateful to China Daily and in inviting me uh, to join you for this exciting uh, discussion. And it's very uh, symbolic of how uh, perhaps China as a country is in order for you to organize this so easily using modern technology. A number of people in China have heard me say in the past few years uh, in the work I've done on antibiotics, people have always thought that the antibiotic challenge is something for the future. Uh, on one level, uh, the COVID-19 is something uh, which is obviously a virus as opposed to an antibiotic infection, but it's real and it's with us here. And my goodness me, this is hugely global. You know, in my judgment, um, we have so much to learn uh, from China and also other Asian countries uh, because uh, despite uh, the beginning of this uh, uh, virus uh, having its own challenges for China, the speed uh, in which China seems to have brought it under control uh, is exactly what all of us in Western Europe and the United States now need to be learning from. We need to learn quickly uh, as to what China did right in order to help everybody else get this thing under control. You know, China has uh, become the second largest economy in the world a long time ago. Uh, at the end of last year, before this crisis, it was about $14.5 trillion. Uh, and the speed at which China still influences the world, the, even at its own domestic lowest growth rate for 30 years, uh, last couple of years in each of them, it created another Australia. So uh, for China to get back to normal growth is, is almost definitely uh, key for the performance of the world economy. Uh, what complicates it is because China's two to three months ahead of the rest of us, China's now starting to gear up its economy. The data we had for China for February, published earlier this week, showed essentially a 20% decline in the Chinese economy, uh, which hopefully is only for one month. Uh, but if that were to, uh, to be continuing uh, for the whole year, that would be equivalent to uh, taking off the world economy, an economy the size of the United Kingdom in, 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 in one year. And so, uh, I worry uh, dramatically, frankly, today that many other countries around the world are going to really struggle to be able to do as uh, forcibly as what China has done uh, to close its economy down uh, in order to control this virus because it, it is going to test uh, the economic model that the whole of my generation uh, has been brought up on and, 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 and for some decades before. It is a colossal mental shock to the way uh, Western Europe and uh, most of the so-called G7 countries live. And we need extremely imaginative and ambitious policies economically uh, very soon uh, to deal with that. Uh, I've actually written something for Chatham House which I call People's QE. Uh, where we are going to almost have to consider um, replacing all lost personal incomes uh, and maybe even all lost company revenues for at least the next two months. In that sense, economically, it's perhaps a much bigger test for all of us than it was uh, seemingly so far for China. But obviously, in itself, for China to recover to something like vaguely normal economic growth, will be of tremendous importance and relief for the rest of the world. And what is already very nice to see is China sharing a lot of the, uh, apparently showing a lot of the medical and health evidence uh, of the strain of this virus to as many people that request it, especially uh, real uh, health uh, vaccine research people uh, actually a new vaccine. I just heard a story before we're talking uh, about that exactly happening with some uh, scientists in the United States uh, and a human being, uh, I think in Seattle, actually being tested, which could not happen if China wouldn't have offered that particular assistance.
And so I think uh, there's an enormous amount of uh, technical uh, help from a pure scientific perspective uh, that China can do. I started working in finance in 1982. Uh, there was a crisis uh, already that year involving the Latin American debt crisis. And, and uh, every uh, six or seven years or so, from uh, nearly all those 40 years ago, I've been through a lot of crises, particularly uh, the TMT crisis 2000, and even bigger, of course, the, uh, the financial crisis of 2008. This, I'm about to say, uh, is even bigger, because it's both a supply shock and a demand shock, and of course, linked to what we've been talking about, its cause has got nothing to do with uh, economics, it's to do with health. Uh, what, what therefore is needed to solve it is a lot more complicated uh, and we need to have urgency, imagination and determination around the world. And if we don't, uh, the recession that the world has inevitably already gone into the past few weeks uh, will end up being very, very severe.